And before we get into our debate tonight, the BJP has already interpreted the Ayodhya verdict coming from the Allahabad High Court as one that paves the way for the building of a grand mandir at Ayodhya. But is the BJP in danger of displaying triumphalism at a time when others are talking about national healing? Before we go to our panel, our newsmaker tonight, Arun Jaitley. Arun Jaitley, uh, we've heard many different interpretations of this verdict from many different leaders of the BJP. But if I had to ask you, as somebody who, who can also put a legal eye on it, what do you believe is the big picture message that emerges from this verdict? What would you say it is? Well, I think this verdict has come as a great relief to the whole country. Well, my party and I have always been in favor of a uh, construction of a temple at what we perceive to be the birthplace of Lord Ram and therefore we find that this judgment has a very significant aspect that it's a step forward in that direction. At the same time the judges have used the legal instruments available with them in a civil litigation to arrive at a situation where they can also lay down the foundations of what perhaps may strengthen India, India's uh, integration, which may also strengthen inter-community relations in India. And they've done it in a style. Uh, of course, there'll be people on both sides who are not satisfied with it. I have not read the judgment or the text. I may have some uh, opinion or criticism of the judgment or something in favor of it after I've run it. But from what I gather on the preliminary reports we've seen, I think that's broadly the direction of the judgment. But one of the very sharp criticisms that has come from some legal commentators is the fact that there is a dangerous precedent being set of mixing up very specific matters of faith and making them sound like points of law. For example, the exact birthplace of Lord Ram. Now, it's one thing to argue that many Hindus believe that this particular place is the birthplace of Lord Ram and quite another for the court to have an almost uh, evidentiary scientific approach to it. Don't you think as a lawyer that that sense, sets a dangerous precedent? Well, I have two preliminary points and then the substantive answer to what you are asking. First of all, who are these experts? Till 4 o'clock on various channels including yours, I saw these experts saying, oh, there's going to be a judgment of the court, the judgment must be expected, uh, respected. From 4.15 onwards, when they realized that the judgment had probably not gone the way they wanted it to be, they turned into bitter critics of this judgment. The kind of language, the kind of comments which have been made, including by people like a former Chief Justice, etc., is the least that I expected. How can there be constitutionalism being used only as a convenience by these people? The second point, these comments have come from people who have not read the judgment, neither have I nor have you. We've only seen the preliminary reports or a brief synopsis. Now, let me tell you, there was specific issues in the civil suit. And this is a civil litigation in which issues are framed. The issues were, is this place perceived to be the birthplace of Lord Ram by the Hindus? Is it perceived to be the Janmastan? Now, once this is an issue, people leave evidence on that issue. And when they lead evidence on that issue, you argue that issue, the judges will pronounce on that issue. Now, it's very easy without reading the judgment to say, oh, why did you say so? As I understand it, it's a judgment on what is perceived. Now, whether Lord Ram was born here or not born here, I don't know. I have not read the judgment. But the fact, the existence of such a perception is a matter of fact, which a court could legitimately, after framing an issue, uh, uh, base its judgment on.